Okay, now that we've installed Lightroom, let's go through the preference pane and talk about some of the settings that you might want to change from their default. I'm going to launch Lightroom by clicking the Creative Cloud icon up in the menu bar. And I'm just going to click where it says Lightroom Classic CC. Obviously, I can also click where it says Open. I'm uh, using this on a Mac, so a couple of the things I might suggest are Mac-oriented. The first thing I would suggest is that you go down on your dock and click and hold the Lightroom icon and drag it and place it somewhere else in your dock that's more convenient. Once you do that, it will stay in your dock even when Lightroom isn't running, and you can always launch Lightroom by just clicking in the dock. I'm also going to right-click on this little divider here so I can turn hiding on. I usually don't like the dock to show unless I want it to. Obviously, I can get docking the dock to show by just dragging down to the bottom of the screen and clicking something. But the reason I do that is that I can make my Lightroom window a little bigger. The max window button up in the menu bar has two functions. If I option click that button, it will fill the screen with a window. But if I just click on it, it will go to full screen mode, which means I don't have to see the menu bar unless I want to go up to the top and have it pop down again. To open preferences, we just go to the Lightroom menu and select preferences. On Windows, you can get to the preferences settings by clicking the edit menu and selecting preferences. A couple of things you might want to be aware of on this screen. First, you can tell Lightroom what to do when you first launch it. The default is to reopen the last catalog that it had open when you close Lightroom. You can instead say to show you a list of all your most recent catalogs that you've opened and let you pick. Below this line, any recent catalogs you've opened will show in as, as a list as well. And you can tell Lightroom, just go ahead and open this catalog no matter what every time you open. If that catalog isn't in that most recent list, you can select the other choice and go locate that catalog on your hard drive and then tell Lightroom to always open that catalog when you open the program. Those are kind of the choices that you have. I think most people leave it at the default, but in case a different workflow suits you, that's where you can make that choice. I personally turn the show import dialog when a memory card is detected box off. In my case, when I'm importing into Lightroom, it's a deliberate step. I'm doing it. Uh, Lightroom is something that I'll typically launch after I've inserted the card, and then I'll just click the import button. I don't really need Lightroom to try to figure out when I'm trying to import images, but that's obviously a choice you can make as well. This treat JPEG files next to RAW files might apply to some shooters. If you're a shooter that likes to have your camera capture both the RAW and a JPEG, when you import those into Lightroom, Lightroom will go ahead and move the JPEG files to your permanent storage. You don't have to do anything special, but it won't show them as part of the catalog. It'll show you the RAW file. If you would like to see both of those in the catalog, you can enable this option. However, keep in mind this only applies to anything you import going forward. If there's a folder of images that you've imported previously and you now want to see those JPEGs, you can enable this option and then go synchronize that folder and we'll get into what a synchronizing a folder is in a, another video down the road. Lightroom has a lot of presets that you can use as, as well as printing templates. This option will tell Lightroom to store the presets in the same folder as the catalog. By default, these are stored inside of Adobe support files buried in your system library. If you're a, someone that has several catalogs and you want your presets to be available in all of them, then obviously, leaving this preset off is the best option. If you're someone like me who keeps his Lightroom library on a separate hard drive and then will mount that hard drive on various computers to work with a catalog, I typically have one at home and then I have a laptop I take with me. Having the presets stored with a catalog is an advantage because no matter what computer I use, they are available. The disadvantage of that is they become specific to that catalog and when you open another catalog, it's a little more challenging to get those presets to be in that catalog as well. So that's the main choices on this screen. External editing 
Lightroom always placed Photoshop in the top as the, an external editor. When you're looking at an image, you can right click on it and you'll have several options to open another program such as Photoshop. This tells Lightroom what to send to that program. Obviously, before it goes to Photoshop, it will actually render out a full RGB file. You can say what format you want it to be saved in. Of course, you can specify a different working space and bit depth if you prefer. I myself keep it in Pro Photo 16 bit until I'm ready for some output. If you'd find you'd rather work in a smaller color space, you certainly can. Anything other than Pro Photo RGB really doesn't need to be a 16 bit file. This, of course, helps to keep your files a little smaller, but under today's circumstances where storage is so inexpensive, I've just decided I would leave it at this until I'm ready to actually make a file to go somewhere. The resolution is a metadata number that tells the printer how to calculate sizes based on the uh, dots per inch. 360 is the resolution output of a Epson printer, so that's the number I usually put in here. If you have a Canon or a HP printer, you might want to change that to 300, or you might be using an outside lab and can find out what their service provides. Understand this is simply a metadata number. All it does is help Lightroom calculate how big something will be, but the bottom line is when you render out a file, you will determine its overall size and resolution at that point in time. So it's more just a convenience than anything. You can also specify another editor that will be available in the pop-up menu, such as something from Nick or Photomatix. You simply select it here. Uh, you simply click the choose button and locate it and it will be stored for you. And here again, you can specify the file format that Lightroom will send to that external program. If you don't select a program here and leave this blank, then when you right click a menu, then when you right click an image, you will actually be able to select another editor there and it will go through the process. It just won't store it as your uh, default. Stack with original means that when you create a file outside of Lightroom and then you save it, especially in Photoshop, Photoshop will automatically add it to your library and it will stack it with the original. This means that the two will have a relation and you can click and have them stack on top of each other. We'll go more into stacking later, but it's actually a good option to leave on. And finally, if you would like to have that file name something other than the default, which is by adding dash edit to the raw image file name, you can go in here and you can select other options to say, for example, I have mine usually uh, do dash Photoshop or dash PS for Photoshop. And that's where you can set that. File handling, I usually don't uh, really do anything on this screen. I don't work with DNGs and I've never had a problem with any of these. So we won't get into that at this point. On interface, the end mark allows you to set a little flourish at the end of your panels. If you wanna do a custom flourish, you can actually go to the end panel folder, place a graphic file inside this folder and then when you launch Lightroom the next time, that will appear in your little menu to choose. I have a little yin yang that I use. I always turn my font size to large. I just, uh, hard, to, hard for me to see, so that's a choice. It'll just make the font sizes in your panels a little larger. Notice when you do that, that won't actually take effect until you quit and start Lightroom again. All the screen color choices are, defaults are pretty good. And most of these you can change while you're in the program just by right clicking in the window. The only other thing I would mention here is sometimes if you've got a mouse or a trackpad which seems to be flipping between images when you're really wanting to just move, that's from this setting down here. And you can say to turn, you can disable that so it won't move from image to image when you swipe. Occasionally there's some weird graphic glitches going on. The first thing to check is to turn your graphics processor off. Some of them aren't as compatible as others, so that's something to try. I don't know why anybody would want to use a smart preview instead of an original. If you have the original available, I suppose if you have a pretty underpowered computer, that might be helpful. But I think smart previews are useful to take on the road, so you can do some editing while you're traveling. But I'm still concerned when using an adjustment brush that I might not get the quality of the masking that I need once it goes back to the original. So. I pretty much don't use that. The 
Optimize catalog button here is one way you can optimize the catalog, something you should do occasionally. However, it's an automatic process that can be performed when you do a catalog backup. And it's always best to do a backup first. So I actually recommend that you don't use this button to optimize it, but you simply click the checkbox in the backup dialog when you quit Lightroom, which will tell Lightroom to optimize your catalog after it makes the backup. That way, if you have a problem with the optimize and it corrupts the database, you can simply go to that backup. The last right two things that uh, we won't go into in this uh, video, we'll actually do a video on syncing a little, little bit later. And last in this panel is networking. If you have to deal with an op proxy server, then probably need to get with your IT people and understand how to make sure this is set up right. Let's go back to performance and now we're gonna click go to catalog settings. You can also get to the catalog settings by uh, going to the Lightroom menu and selecting it up here. Under general, the main option is how often you want Lightroom to ask you to back up your Lightroom catalog. It will ask you when you exit and the default is once a week. When it does ask, you can say yes back up. You can say no back up. If you say no, it will keep asking you until you do back up, then it will wait a week again. Or in that dialogue, you can say, don't ask me for another week. So these are all of the choices. Once a week is a pretty good default to use. Understand this is only backing up your catalog. It's not backing up your photographs. I prefer to have a more robust backup system where I have redundant copies of everything. So I actually am backing up my catalog along with all my image files onto secondary hard drives. And I would probably opt to use that if I needed to get back rather than one of the backups that Lightroom made. On file handling, it will create a standard preview size. The auto option will base that on the size of your display. Personally, I always say, you know, go ahead and make a big one because sometimes I use a larger display and sometimes others. And I also tell it to do a high quality. Now, the disadvantage of this is it will, when you import, it will take more time to generate all of the previews. So if you're shooting a lot of images and importing a lot of images, it might be better to pick a fairly small size and a low quality. Lightroom will always generate a more appropriate size when it needs to, including a one-to-one. -one. Same thing with discarding one-to-ones. I tell Lightroom to never discard them because I've moved all the images I'm not interested in out of my Lightroom catalog. And so the ones I have in there are ones that I would like to keep that one-to-one. -one. But if you're doing a lot of images and you zoom into one-to-one, -one, you might say, you know, I don't need those again, so get rid of them quickly. It will always rebuild another one if you need it. So the only advantage of keeping the one-to-one -one previews is so you can zoom in while in the library module. It doesn't even affect the speed in the develop module. As far as metadata, I recommend that you turn on the automatically write changes into XMP sidecar file. When you go from one image to another, all of the settings for that file will be written into that XMP sidecar file. And other programs such as Photoshop or opening another Lightroom catalog will recognize. And so you will have the exact same data and the file will look identical. The only difference is you don't have the history, which a lot of times isn't very relevant anyway. If you do large shoots with a lot of files and you tend to auto sync or you sync a lot of them so you apply a change and then you sync it to 100, I suppose that might cause a slight lag as it has to write all 100 of those .xmp sidecar files. And you can always force Lightroom to write those later if you remember to. If you see your machine lagging because you're doing a lot of that, that's maybe something to turn off to see if it helps. So that's it with the way to set up your basic preferences. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to customize the user interface a little bit, as well as how to begin importing your photographs. Until then, thanks.